Starship has been on the heels of NASA ever since the debut of their mega rocket, Artemis 1. This space machine is history's giant rocket. Its launch last year confirmed the medal of the biggest rockets in the agency's arms. But how long will NASA keep it? Elon Musk seems determined to be the perpetual keeper of the trophy. And in all possibilities, that's going to happen in a few weeks from now. Starship will be NASA's worthy competitor thanks to its colossal statue. From the ground, Starship towers 120 meters in height, compared to NASA's SLS at 98 meters tall. Unlike NASA's Artemis 1, which can lift 98 metric tons of cargo to space, Starship performs even better. The stainless steel space vehicle can lift 150 metric tons into orbit, thanks to the tremendous thrust that it generates from its powerful Raptor engines. However, this impressive capacity to carry or lift cargo exists only in theory. Starship has not yet demonstrated in reality that it can achieve this, and the day for the grant testing is hedging closer. Since the beginning of the year, there has been a beehive of activities at the expected launch site for the Starship, famously known as Starbase, in Boca Chica, Texas. The company has pledged to millions of spectators that its first orbital launch will happen in a few weeks. But you know, this is no ordinary rocket. The immense power and thrust attainable by this vessel demand the erection of appropriate structures at the launch site that can endure its fervent heat and power. And the best place to begin is the flow of the launch pad. SpaceX has had to replace the concrete floor below the launch pad after conducting each Starship full static fire test. The ferocious winds of flames and heat often eat deep into the concrete floor, making routine repairs and necessities. Do you know these static fire tests did not happen at full throttle, but merely half of the total throttle force? Elon Musk tweeted the following during the Booster 7 fire test in February. This test is at 50% throttle. Launch attempt next month will be at 90%. What, therefore, will be the impact of a full throttle or the 90% expected to happen in a few weeks? There will be a need to prepare the concrete flow thoroughly. But SpaceX has decided to replace the floor material with those capable of enduring extreme temperatures. The concrete made of this material is known to be resistant to temperatures ranging from as low as negative 180 degrees Celsius to temperatures as high as 1,100 degrees Celsius. They also endure thermal shock, abrasion, and corrosion thanks to their thick constituent of special alumina binders and synthetic aggregates. But the hypofondag is soon to be tested when Starship fires at 90% throttle for its fast-to-orbital mission. Will it hold? Or will it be ripped apart? It is yet to be known. But SpaceX did not stop here in arming with endurance the floor of Starship's launch pad, famously known as Stage Zero. Well, you must have noticed that during every rocket launch, an immense amount of water is sprayed under the launch at very high pressure and velocity. The reason may not be as apparent as you would imagine. During the firing of a rocket, immense acoustic energy in the form of sound is produced. And this can wreak havoc on the space vehicle and even the surroundings. To solve this problem, SpaceX has been installing a water deluge system at their OLS in Starbase. The flood of water fired below the launch pad will absorb the explosive and destructive sound energy and help to preserve the concrete from the melting heat of the rocket's exhaust. Some water will absorb the excess heat and expel it as vaporized water. Some water deluge components were shipped from the other Starship launch site at Kennedy Space Center KSC, in Florida. And in case you are not aware, it is here that the Starship's second iteration of the Starship launch pad is to be situated. Ironically, SpaceX's Florida facility had been in construction long before Starbase began in Boca Chica, Texas. But unfortunately, the structure is not yet complete it has experienced several challenges and delays. One reason for the delay is attributed to the fact that the orbital launch site, OLS, is the same KSC LC-39A pad that SpaceX leased from NASA to fly their Dragon spacecraft as well as the Falcon Heavy rockets. And as far as Masai is concerned, Starship is not their priority at this site. The agency deprioritized it, thus complicating the plans for its speedy completion. It is not to say that NASA is playing down SpaceX's efforts to develop its space vehicle. Why should they? Has NASA not selected Starship as the vehicle that will be used to conduct the human crewed mission to the moon under the Artemis program? So where is the bone of contention? 
Well, SpaceX has got an unfulfilled duty. It has yet to complete its contract with NASA to fly the Crew Dragon spacecraft and the Falcon Heavy rocket from the same site. SpaceX's Florida launch facility is the only site to launch these space vehicles. But it seems like the agency cannot entirely trust SpaceX. Perhaps there is a fear that they will not adhere to the contract terms when given the green light to develop Starship. But other reasons caused the delay of Florida's Starship launch pad. After the construction of the OLS began in 2019, several new designs and updates have been made to the early versions of Starship. These new features necessitated the halting of the construction of the OLS-2 in Florida. By the end of 2020, the site had been abandoned. A year later, in 2021, it resumed with a different plan. But most of the materials at the site were rendered redundant by the change of the program. Such materials include the water deluge system with piping and storage tanks, which have been ferried to be installed at the Starship launch facility in Boca Chica. Will they finish in time to use it during the first Starship orbital tour? Or will the system have to wait till the subsequent launches? It all depends on the speed of the engineers on site. The Starship Stage 0 will have more splendorous updates and improvements. Though some will happen later, it has already begun at the Kennedy Space Center LS-39A launch pad in Florida. SpaceX has installed a pair of giant steel arms at the launch tower. The swing arms, which the SpaceX workers have nicknamed chopsticks, are expected to be used to launch and to receive the fully reusable Starship rocket. Besides that, the steel arms will contain piping and an umbilical device used to refuel the rocket. And to facilitate the lifting up and down of the rocket, the chopstick-like extensions are attached to skateboard appendages, enabling it to roll up and down the tower. This feature will allow it to position the Starship rocket and Super Heavy boosters accurately. But as we mentioned, it is yet to be installed at the Starbase facility. But SpaceX has other things to worry about besides the Stage 0 preparation. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA, has not yet given them the green light to fly. Do you think that is going to happen soon? Let us hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can always get a notification when we post the latest and most exciting space news that you would not want to miss. Till next time, cheers!